Hello, my name is Scott Sullivan. I'm with Advanced Alarm Systems. We're going to give you a quick overview of your fire alarm system. We're at Fire Station 76 with the FCI panel here. Uh, at all the fire stations, these are all identical panels. Um, all the buttons are pretty much identical, somewhat self-explanatory. So we're going to run through some quick basic operations, um, which would hopefully answer all your questions. Uh, right now, we are offline with the monitoring company. Inside the fire panel, we have the breaker number, and we also have the account number and phone number to call in so that they don't return and call you back if you have a fire alarm, which is interesting. Um, we also have our sticker on here, 24-hour service. If you need anything or have any questions, feel free to call me. Um, basic system buttons on here. We have a couple of acknowledge buttons. Those shut off the panel tone. If you ever cause a trouble, here's an example. That's the trouble tone. Press the acknowledge button. It will silence the tone. That's all that the acknowledge button does. One for alarm conditions, one for trouble conditions. You've got the signal silence button on here. That shuts off the horns and strobes if the panel goes into an alarm condition. Uh, it is a toggle button. If you push the button once, it will silence the panel. If you push the button again, it will unsilence the panel. So make sure you push it once good and wait for a second. System reset is also the lamp test button. If you're going to do a system reset, make sure you push and hold the button. If you just push it, it will go through a system lamp test, and it fools a lot of people thinking that they've reset it. You actually need to hold it down. It will tell you that it's resetting after about four or five seconds, and actually now you're doing a panel reset. So for any alarm conditions, you need to hold it down for a good four to five seconds until it says it's actually resetting. It will then give you a countdown time of it's doing its system startup. Uh, we've given you, we'll go through the menu buttons. We've given you, uh, given you a bunch of shortcut buttons on here. You've got one for your fire signal bypass. That bypasses all of the horns and strobes in the building. Um, if you want to do a test or anything like that, you don't want to make any noise or wake anybody up, yeah, push that. It will keep the horns and stuff from activating. You've got a CO sounder base bypass. There's a CO detector outside of all of the dorm rooms. It has a sounder base that is programmed to go for CO detection only. If you want to bypass that for whatever reason, push this button and it will bypass that base. Uh, which is a sounder base. All of these conditions will cause a fault on the panel, which will call out to the monitoring company. So before you ever touch this, make sure you call phone number, give them the account number, take it offline with them. Uh, apparatus bay detectors in your engine bays, we've got a combination of photo heat detector. Um, enough heat will actually activate the detector. If it sees enough smoke, it will go into a supervisory condition, but it has to see either enough heat rise or heat and smoke rise for it to actually go into an alarm condition. If it just sees smoke without any heat, it's programmed just to go into a supervisory condition. And we put those in in the apparatus bays and in the kitchens to keep any false alarms from happening if you're driving the trucks in, uh, cause a lot of dust or smoke or anything like that um, without heat conditions. We don't want to have a bunch of false alarms out here. So those are what those are intended for. Uh, kitchen detector bypass. This is a button that we've just shortcutted for the kitchen. So if you burn your toast and you know you're going to set it off, you can poke this button. It'll keep that detector from evacuating the building. CO detector bypass. If you have a reason that you think you're going to set off the CO detector, you have a shortcut button for that also. You can perform all these functions through the menu on here, which we can go through. Um, these are just quick shortcut buttons that you can do. Uh, SLC bypass button. That actually shuts down all your initiation points, all the smokes, all the pull stations, everything in the building. Uh, if you push that button, you could burn your building down, blow it up. This panel will not care, so take care when you push that button there. Uh, CO detector mode button. This makes it easier for us to tech this, test the CO detector. It takes out the compensation levels, so when we can put CO detection CO into it, it will actually uh, report back to the panel faster. That way it's not going through tons of CO, trying to compensate for any condition like that. Uh, the menu button on here has different levels. They all have a number by each one, so you've got a config, a walk drill, an I.O., which stands for input, output, clock, if you want to set the clock, miscellaneous, log, version, and installation. So we can go through those real quick. It will time out after, I think, 30 seconds. It will has four levels of passwords. It will ask you for a level password. You should never get into config. That's for programming. It won't do you any good. There's walk drill for testing better just pull a pull station. Three for input output. If you want to disable something, it'll ask you for your level two password. Level two password at all the stations is all twos. Level one is all ones. 
and so forth for threes. Um, you can turn a point on or off, or, you, or if you wanted to enable or disable a point, push two. It will give you a loop one, sensor zero, zero, 001, it was where it will start. You can either scroll through all your devices if you want, or you can manually enter it. So we know that the engine bay is loop one, sensor two. So I could just scroll the two if I wanted, or I could push the one key, S, if I want to stay S, I could keep it S. I might put in 003, let's say, which is right here by the fire panel. Push OK. I have two options, enable and disable. So I want to, it will automatically go to the alternate state, so it's OK to disable. Push the button, and now the point is disabled and it will display on the panel. Acknowledge the trouble. Re-enabling it is the same thing, same way, same steps going through it. I'm going to hit OK to enable, and now it's enabled and it clears the fault. The menu button will back you out, also, of the menu. Uh, if you want to set the clock, push 4, type in the level 1 password, super secret, all ones. Gives you an option for time and date. Just enter the time as you would, hit OK and enter. Pretty basic. Uh, miscellaneous, set the baud rate, you should never need to do that, and restart the panel. Only if some major catastrophe happens, you can do that pretty much. If you want to view the log, push 6. Level 2 password. Display log, print log, clear log, and sensitivity report. If you wanted to display the log, push 1. You can then arrow back through the history. You're going back in time here. We just disconnected. Disconnect restored. Acclimate dual. Acknowledge. This is everything that happens in the system. And you can go through this for days and days and days. The one thing you'll notice is that if it doesn't give you all the information, if you hit the edit backspace button, it will actually tell you that third line of text for what that is, that point is. So if I get back to that acclimate, <coughs> acclimate detector number three and push the edit backspace, it'll say apparatus bay enter entry by main fire panel, or by fire panel. Hit the menu button to back out of that if you like. Uh, version installation is just information for the panel. Um, Let's see here. We can go actually go ahead and pull the pull station and we can kind of walk you through what everything will look like and sound like. The FCI keys for the panel are all the same. Same for the pull stations also. So to pull a pull station or smoke stacker, you'll pull it. Everything will go. I can hit system silence. Silence will come on, or I can push this button. This is just a shortcut button also. If I push the silence button again, this will give you a yellow indicator saying it's been bypassed. Same with the rest of these, though. I'll give you a yellow indicator and a display saying it's in bypass. Before you can reset the panel, you've got to reset the pull station. With your FCI keys, these are made so... All you have to do is open and close it, and that actually resets it. It's spring-loaded, and it's just a switch in here. So there is a piece of plastic in here that is spring-loaded back up, so when you close it, it goes to the up position, as you can see. So open and close it. If you want to flip the switch, you can. Once you've done that, if you want to acknowledge it, you can. It just shuts off the beeping here. Once you've got the alarm condition reset, you can then reset the panel by holding it down. Right now I've got this in bypass, so it's going to go back into trouble telling me I have a system uh, bypass on for the audibles. That will happen in a second here. There we go, system bypass on. I can acknowledge that, or I can just clear the bypass. Smoke detector heads um, are all twist in style. If you have something that's a real new and you can reach it, you can untwist it. It will report missing. They are all rotary dial in the back. Same with the pull stations. If you need to replace a smoke detector, you need to make sure you have the same type, model number, and address. Here's where it says address 3. This is dialed in at 03. So that's how we know where this is at. We've actually given this number 3 that label of apparatus bay by fire panel. 
Uh, trouble conditions generally will not reset. You have to actually clear the faults. In this case, I can reset the panel all I want. It's not going to fix the head being put back in until I actually fix the problem. They're keyed. Just snap the head back in, wait a few seconds, and the panel will recognize that it's back and clear itself. Uh, if you do have any questions, call that number and we'd be happy to answer anything um, or come out and give you any additional training that you may need. Thanks a lot.